power plant or ZNPP and the adjacent territories were taken by the Russian army under its control back on February 28th. As a result of negotiations with the management of the power plant, an agreement was reached to place it under the guard of the Russian military. The goal is to prevent the Ukrainian nationalists or other terrorist forces from taking advantage of the current situation to organize a nuclear provocation. The goal is also to ensure the security of the station and prevent interruptions in power supply to the population of Ukraine and U European consumers. At present, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and adjacent territory are being guarded by Russian troops. In order to do this, personnel has been brought in with relevant experience, including experience in operating the engineering and technical facilities uh, that the nuclear power plant is equipped with. A similar situation is, uh, the situation is currently similar in the area of the Chernobyl power plant. The security of its facilities is being ensured jointly by the Russian armed forces and the Ukrainian operators of the nuclear installations and our servicemen are not interfering in the work of the operators of the Ukrainian power plants. They are limiting their objectives merely to ensuring their security. As we were informed by the Russian Ministry of Defense on the night of March 4th, while patrolling the protected, protected area, but, but not the area of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant itself, rather the adjacent territory. A Russian mobile patrol was attacked by a Ukrainian sabotage group. In order to provoke return fire on the building, there was a heavy small fire, small arms fire that was opened on Russian troops from the windows of several floors of the training complex that is located just outside the territory of the nuclear power plant. The Russian patrol returned fire on the firing points of the Ukrainian saboteurs in the building of the training complex and suppressed their fire. As they were leaving, the Ukrainian sabotage group set fire to the training facility. Let me emphasize once again that this building is not located on the territory of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The fire brigades that arrived were able to extinguish the fire on the premises. At the time of this provocation, none of the regular employees of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant were present in the training building. At present, the personnel of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which was not injured, as we were assured by the permanent representative of the U.S., continues to work normally and is maintaining plant facilities and monitoring the radiation situation. The background radiation levels in the area of the nuclear power plant are normal. All the nuclear power plant facilities are under the control of the Russian military. Their security has been fully ensured and the station continues to function normally in accordance with technological requirements. The power units of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant were not damaged. Their condition is as follows. The first has been disconnected for repair. The second and third have been temporarily disconnected uh, by the decision of the station's management. The fourth is operating at 690 megawatts, and the fifth and sixth are being cooled. According to the assessments of IA leadership, which were set out in the press statement dated March 4th, the operation of the nuclear power plant continues normally. Nothing threatens the safety of the six power units. The radiation monitoring systems at the station are fully operational and there is no threat of a release of radioactive material. 
I would like to remind you that in 2014, Ukrainian nationalists already tried to destabilize the situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and in the city of Enerhodar. Western states ignored this egregious case back then, and it could have potentially led to disaster. And at the time, we drew attention to the serious incident. Now, when the Russian military is doing everything to ensure the safety and security of Ukrainian nuclear facilities, a Russian, a massive anti-Russian propaganda campaign is unfolding based on absurd allegations that Russia is allegedly trying to create a source of radioactive contamination. And I urge you to think, what would be the point of us doing this? We are the best position to be aware of and on top of the situation. We are the most interested in maintaining nuclear and general security in Ukraine, physical and nuclear security, to be properly maintained and insured in Ukraine. We are Ukraine's neighbors. And together with the people of Belarus and Ukraine, we lived through the tragedy of Chernobyl. And so we are more interested than most in maintaining a normal radiation situation throughout the territory of Ukraine. I would like to emphasize once again that the danger to the civilian population of Ukraine is not emanating from Russian troops. It is coming from Ukrainian nationalists who are holding the civilian populations of a number of large cities hostage and carrying out acts of sabotage and provocations, one of which is what we are now discussing. After that, they attempt to blame Russia for all of it. Yesterday's incident at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is a clear illustration of this and your reaction to this incident and your attempts to blow it into a global scandal, my dear Western colleagues, leave no doubt that the radicals and extremists in Ukraine were and are under your close guardianship and protection. They have a sort of carte blanche from you. For the sake of your Ukrainian project, you're ready to forget about the future and well-being of ordinary Ukrainians, just as for eight years you tried to ignore the systematic shelling of the civilians of Donbass by the armed forces of Ukraine. We urge you to calm down your mentees who, in the worst traditions of ISIL terrorists and their Idlib associates, are hiding behind civilians, placing heavy weaponry, and multiple rocket launchers in residential areas. In Mariupol, nationalists have detained 60 citizens who were on their way to the humanitarian corridor that was established and forcibly transported them to the 34th local school, which has been mined. Now these terrorists are using civilians as a human shield and blackmailing the advancing forces of the Donetsk People's Republic with their readiness to blow up a school full of hostages. These terrorists are preventing those civilians wishing to leave the cities from doing so. This practice is affecting not only Ukrainians, but also foreign citizens. The number of foreign nationals who are being forcibly held by Ukrainian nationalists is shocking. In Kharkov, this includes 3,189 citizens of India, up to 2,700 citizens of Vietnam, 202 citizens of China. In Sumy, this includes 576 Indian citizens, 101 Ghanaian citizens, and 121 Chinese citizens. In Chernihiv, there are nine citizens of Indonesia being held. Yesterday in Kharkov, nationalists fired on a group of Chinese citizens who were trying to independently uh, leave into Russian territory, and two of them were injured. The Russian military is doing everything to ensure the peaceful evacuation of foreign nationals. Thus, in the Belharod region at the Nehotevska and Sudza checkpoints, as of 6 a.m. today, 130 comfortable buses were standing ready in order to leave for Kharkov and Sumy to rescue Indian students and other foreign citizens. Checkpoints have been equipped with temporary accommodations, rest facilities, and hot meals. Mobile medical stations have been deployed with stocks of medications. The evacuees will be later transported to Belgorod and subsequently brought home by air. I would like to draw your attention to another egregious episode 
regarding which we would like to hear clarification from the Secretariat's rapporteur. The Telegram channel of the so-called Territorial Defense of Kramatorsk published a message about the requisitioning of cars of UN mission personnel. And if the Secretariat is not aware of this, we are ready to provide the relevant materials. And that message states, and I quote, sorry, but the goal justifies the means. We have requisitioned UN vehicles as we need them now, end of quote. According to the nationalists, and I quote again, there is full understanding on the part of the UN. There were no official statements or protests from the UN, end of quote. We're extremely concerned that UN mission vehicles could end up in the hands of, or could have already end up in the hands of terrorists and be used for terrorist purposes. If the Secretariat is really aware of this situation, as the nationalists claim, then we would like to receive an explanation of why the UN did not inform member states of this. Thank you. I thank the representative.